to a patient with a headache, produced by SUNY Downstate College of Medicine medical students. A 52-year-old woman with a history of breast cancer presents with a throbbing unilateral headache over the last two days. It's associated with nausea, photophobia, and phonophobia. It differs from her previous headaches in that it wakes her from sleep. She denies other symptoms, including fever, changes in vision, or neck stiffness. She's afebrile, normotensive, and her neurological exam is normal with no papilledema. Take a moment. What aspects of her history concern you? Does she need further workup? The most common primary headache disorders are tension, migraine, and cluster headaches. Tension headaches are bilateral with squeezing pressure last from 30 minutes to a week, and are mild to moderate in severity. Migraine headaches are debilitating, often unilateral, throbbing, last from 4 to 72 hours, and associated with photophobia, phonophobia, nausea, or vomiting. Some patients have an aura, most commonly visual, with flickering lights or a scotoma. Triggers include sleep deprivation and menstruation. Cluster headaches present with severe, sharp, unilateral, retroorbital pain lasting 15 to 180 minutes, associated with cranial autonomic symptoms like lacrimation or rhinorrhea. Cluster headache attacks occur between one every other day to up to eight times per day. When assessing a patient with a headache, we need to determine whether they have a primary headache disorder or secondary headaches due to an underlying medical condition. A thorough history can help to develop a differential diagnosis. It's important to clarify the seven dimensions, including timing, onset, quality, location, severity, aggravating and relieving factors, and associated symptoms, such as autonomic features, nausea, and photo and phonophobia. A comprehensive neurological exam is integral to determining if there is a secondary cause of headaches. Key aspects are vital signs, fundoscopic exam to assess for papilledema, any focal neurological exam findings, and special tests such as Grudinsky's and Koenig signs for suspected meningitis. Red flags in the history and exam that suggest a secondary headache disorder fall within the helpful mnemonic SNOOP. S stands for systemic symptoms or disorders. N stands for neurologic symptoms, including focal neurologic findings on exam. 1O stands for onset, specifically sudden onset, which when severe is called a thunderclap headache, seen in subarachnoid hemorrhage. The next O stands for older age, greater than 50. And P stands for pattern change, such as episodic headaches that become daily. Other red flags are signs of increased intracranial pressure, like headaches that awaken one's sleep or papilledema on exam. Let's return to our case. Though many features of the patient's headache are consistent with a migraine, there are a few red flags, including her history of breast cancer and that her headaches wake her from sleep. These warrant further imaging with a head CT or MRI brain to evaluate for possible metastases or other causes of a secondary headache. In certain cases, vessel imaging with a CT or MR angiogram or venogram is warranted. If temporal arteritis is suspected, an estimated sedimentation rate or ESR and C-reactive protein or CRP should also be part of the workup. A lumbar puncture is indicated if there are signs of meningitis elevated intracranial pressure, and for a thunderclap headache. A MRI brain is normal in our patient, suggesting a diagnosis of migraine headaches. For more information about this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com slash neurobytes.